lesson is converting measurement and graphing proportional relationships. Let's get started here. So uh, dimensional analysis, don't worry about that too much, you guys. It's just a method of changing uh, unit measure. We'll do several of that here. So the comparison of, of two quantities with different units is called a rate, okay? And then the ratio of the two uh, equal quantities, uh, each being in different units, is called a conversion factor. For example, you guys, um, uh, uh, 12 inches equals a foot. So that would be uh, the ratio, uh, one foot is equal to 12 inches, or 1 over 12, we'll have that in there. So that would be our conversion factor on there, okay? And so the rate, we'll talk about all of that here in just a second. So here's an example. A large adult human has about 12 pints of blood. Use dimensional analysis to convert this quantity to gallons. Okay, don't worry about that big old word, which is... It's code word. Just convert it to gallons, you guys. That's all. That, that's all this fancy, fancy, dancy uh, talking is right here. Just convert it to to gallons. Okay, so here we go, you guys. So let's convert the the pints to quarts. Now, probably you don't remember how many quarts are in it or how many pints are in a quart, and that's okay if you don't, you guys. Um, uh, because I don't sometimes, you guys. I have to look it up sometimes. Anyway, so uh, one quart equals two pints right there. So the conversion factor, that's what this is, is uh, here's the ratio right here. It's a ratio that talks about converting the one quart and the pint. So one quart to two pints right here, okay? Two pints is the same as one quart right there. All right, so we're going to multiply these 12 pints of blood uh, and convert them to quarts right here. So watch what happens when we do that, you guys. Okay, so watch. Can you see these pints are going to cancel? A pint over a pint. Think of, you know, any fraction over itself, they cancel. So these units right here, this pint on top and this pint on bottom, will cancel each other. And then this 2 on the bottom will cancel this 12 on the top, and it'll cancel it to 6. So we have 6 quarts. Okay, now we got to convert uh, the quarts to gallons, so that's going to be our next step, you guys. Do you guys remember how many quarts are in a gallon? That's okay if you don't, you guys. Um, uh, there's four quarts in a gallon right there, so the conversion factor for that is one gallon to every four quarts. Okay, so now we're going to take this six quarts and multiply it by the conversion factor, um, uh, one gallon for every six quarts. So here we go right here. Okay, now check this out. There's a quart on top and there's a quart on bottom. They're going to cancel each other out. And then two goes into this and two goes into this. So two goes into six three times, into four two times. So we get uh, three halves of a gallon, which is the same as one and a half gallons of blood right there. Okay, so 12 pints is the same as one and a half gallons right there. All right, we had to do the conversions. We had to convert uh, the pints to quarts, then we took those six quarts and converted them to gallons, and then wing bang boom, we got it right there. Okay, let's try another one. The length of a building is 720 inches. Use dimensional analysis, or just convert uh, this to yards, you guys. Okay, they're trying to show off with these fancy words right here. It's just, this is just code word. Take 720 inches and convert it to yards. So we're going to convert it to feet first, you guys. Okay, so, so everybody knows there's one foot, um, uh, one foot equals 12 inches. So our conversion factor is going to be one foot over 12 inches. Now, if, you, if you're not sure if you're going to put it 12 over 1 or 1 over 12, we want to get rid of this inches right here. So we got to have the inches in the bottom right here. Okay, if uh, um, so, so we want these inches to cancel right there. So this one's going to be one over twelve. So let's multiply 70, 720 times uh, one over uh, twelve. Okay, now this is uh, one foot for every twelve inches. Now look, these inches are going to cancel, and then twelve times six equals seventy-two. So twelve times sixty is seven hundred twenty. Okay, so this equals sixty feet. All right, now we're going to convert this to yards right here. Okay. So when we convert that to yards, one yard equals three feet. Now, mm -hmm. I want to put it uh, yards on top, feet on bottom, because I want um, uh, I want to convert uh, this to yards. I want to take get rid of this feet right here, so I need to have the feet on the bottom, so it'll cancel that out. So now we'll multiply 60 times uh, 1 over 3. Okay, so now look, this, the feet are going to cancel right here, so we're going to have, um, and then the 3 goes into 60 20 times, so it's going to uh, cancel out to 20 yards right there. Okay, all right, so during a cycling event for charity, Amanda travels 105 kilometers in 4.2 hours, and Brenda travels at a rate of 0.2 miles per minute. So which girl traveled at a, traveled at a greater rate? 
All right, so here's our conversion factor right here. So one mile for every 1.61 kilometers. Okay, now the 1.61 kilometers is going to go in the bottom because I want to convert this to uh, to the rate uh, that that Brenda has, which is in miles per minute. So here we go. So let's go ahead and convert Amanda's rate to the same units as Brenda's rate. And Brenda's rate is miles per minute. So that's what I want to get. I want to go from kilometers per hour to miles per minute. Okay, so one mile equals 1.61 um, uh, kilometers right there. Okay, so there's my conversion factor right there. So set up a conversion factor so that both kilometers and hours are going to cancel. So here we go, you guys. So we want to get it in miles per minute, just like Brenda's miles per minute right here. Okay, so here we go. So uh, here's uh, Amanda's rate. She goes 105 kilometers every 4.2 uh, hours right here. Okay, so we need to get it in miles per minute. So I want to somehow uh, cancel this kilometers, and I want to somehow get rid of those hours. I want it in terms of minute. Okay, so here's we're going to go ahead and throw this in here right here. So one mile uh, per 1.61 kilometers. Now check it out. The kilometers are going to cancel. Let's go ahead and cancel those right now. Whoops, I guess I didn't do that. All right, and then one hour is for every 60 minutes right there. And then, um, then this hour is going to cancel with this hour right here. And we're going to be left with, okay, let's cancel that stuff. Okay, so uh, the kilometers are going to cancel and the hours are going to cancel. So here we are miles per minute and that's what we want we want to get it in miles per minute so 105 105 times 1 times 1 is 105 4.2 times 1.6 times 60 i wish i had done that i didn't do that but it's 105 divided by this product right here so you're going to need a calculator right there and if you do it right 105 so what i did is i multiplied these three numbers first and got some decimal right here Let's see if I can get that on my calculator real fast. I'm pulling up my phone right here. Calculator. So I multiplied uh, 4.2 times uh, 1.61 times that 60. So the denominator, uh, this should have been 405.72. So I take the 105 right there, 105 divided by 405. 0.72 and that's what gets me this right here the 0.2588 okay so it's about 0.2588 miles per minute okay so let's let's see what this is talking about so Amanda this is Amanda's rate and it's in the same uh, rate as Brenda's rate Brenda's rate is miles per minute right here so Amanda goes about uh, 0.26 if I rounded that right there Brenda travels about uh, point two. So, so who's faster? Well, looks like she's faster. Amanda's a little bit faster right there. Okay. All right. Let's try another one here. So, a box of books has a mass of 4.10 kilograms for every meter of height it's stacked. A box of magazines has a mass of three pounds for every foot of height it's stacked. Which box has greater mass per height? Okay, so what we're going to do is make sure we're converted over to the same measure. So we're going to convert, um, uh, we're going to use uh, one pound equals 4.45 uh, kilometers. Okay, so that's going to get rid of this right here if I multiply it by one over 0.45 kilometers. And then uh, one meter is going to equal 3.28 feet. So watch what happens here. We want to get it in the same unit measure as the magazines, pounds, uh, for, per, per foot of height. So pounds, pounds per foot. You guys know that's pounds, right? LB is pounds. Okay, I don't know where they caught from, where they got that from. Okay, so here we go. So 4.10 kilometers for every meter. So 4.10 kilometers for every one meter. Okay, our goal is pounds per foot. So now we're going to use this uh, ratio right here. Okay, so this one pound for every 4.5 kilometers. Now check it out. The kilometers are going to cancel, so that's pretty slick right there. Now we're going to multiply it times uh, one meter for 3.28 feet. Okay, now the meters here are going to cancel the meters here, and we're left with pounds and feet, and that's what we want. Okay, so we multiply 4.10 on top, and then on bottom, 0.45 times 3.28, and when you divide those two, we get about 2.77 pounds per feet. Now, that's the books right there. Okay, so the books weigh to about 2.8. The magazines are about 3 pounds uh, per foot, and so the magazines have a greater mass per unit. Okay, 
All right, so here, Simon sold some candles to raise some money for a school dance. This is a little bit easier than the last stuff, you guys. I think, anyways. He raised a total of $25 for selling 10 candles. So find the unit rate. The unit rate is the amount per candle. Unit just means per per one. So per one candle. And then we're going to graph that relationship. Okay, so the unit rate is the, the total, uh, the amount earned divided by how many candles he sold. So 25 divided by 10 is 2.5 right there. So uh, the unit rate is uh, $2.50 per candle. All right, so now we're going to graph this. So to graph, let's make an XY axis. Okay, so there's our XY axis right there. And this is going to be Simon's earnings right here. Okay, all right, so the X axis is going to represent the candle sold down here because uh, it's independent so uh, this is dependent because the amount earned depends depends on how many candles are sold so however many candles are sold is our independent and this one depends on how many candles are sold so the y-axis is going to represent the amounts earned right there okay all right so the origin uh, represents what happens when Simon sells zero candles uh, he's going to earn zero dollars right here remember they're 250 a candle right here and he made a total of 25 so he sold 10 candles so we labeled this from zero to ten right here and then over here he made twenty five dollars total so we're gonna uh, make that go up to twenty five and i counted these guys by fives right here and that got us up to twenty five right there okay and then let's just go ahead and plot the points right here so if he sold one candle then he made two fifty well two fifty is going to be right here if he sold two candles then just to add another two fifty is five three candles is going to be another 250 so it's five, uh, 750 four candles five candles would be right there so i just keep adding 250 250 so it makes that graph right there all right let's try one more of these a local store sells uh, eight corn muffins for a total of six bucks find the unit rate and then graph okay so so the unit rate is uh, 75 cents per muffin so we're going to put the muffins down here because uh, that's the dependent variable and the amount that they earn depends on how many muffins they sold. So each muffin is 75 cents. So we're going to graph it, you guys. So when we plot all those points right there, so one muffin would be right here, 75 cents. This is one right here, so 75 cents would be a little bit less. And then add 75 cents, well that's going to be $1.50, so it's halfway between $1 and $2. Add 75 cents is $2.25. Add 75 cents is three, and just keep adding, and so you're going to get those plotted right there. Okay. Hey, um, in section F, Simon raised a total of 25 bucks for selling 10 candles. If he raised 30 bucks for selling 10 candles, would his unit rate be higher or lower? Well, that's pretty easy, you guys. You can you can calculate it if you want, get three dollars a candle, or you can just see if he's making more money for 10 candles than he did for 10 candles here. Definitely, this would be a, a higher unit rate on that. All right, if you are in my class, I'd probably assign you something like that. Take care, you guys.